on today's episode. Here in the control box we can see the connector for the limit switches and I managed to find a, a suitable header that fits into there. We can see that uh, we've got ground, Z, Y and the X axis. Also note that uh, I still have my Z axis uh, touch plate installed. Let's now test our connection just by grounding one of those pins and we'll take a look at uh, how the software is set up. To use the limit switches we need to go into the file settings and axis 3. Here we can activate both our positive and negative direction switches. We'll en enable our homing and by default it will home the z-axis first and that will go in a positive direction so that will go up until it hits the limit switch. That means that it's out of the way when it moves the x and y axis to their home positions. The return distance is the distance which the axis will move back having triggered the limit switch. 5 I think is a little high. The limit switches normally uh, will disengage at 3 millimeters. We will double check that. We're good to go. Let us test now one of the axes just to make sure that our software configuration is correct. When we switch the machine on, we can see that there's a problem. The z-axis limit switch is showing magenta, which means that it's active. And this is because we have chosen to use the normally closed contacts. So obviously there's continuity here. What we need to do is to invert this signal so that it doesn't think that it's active. If we look in our I.O. and switch the machine on, we can see that this switch is limit switch 3. Also the touch pad. What we need to do, go to the limit switch tab and invert limit switch 3. Now it doesn't think that the switch is active until we actually press it so that it makes contact. Unfortunately, the side effect of doing this is that our touchpad no longer works. We are going to have to find an alternative solution. Having thought about it for a while, I have a cunning plan. What if we were to invert the signal from the micro switch before it even got to the controller? How are we going to do that? Well, the simplest form of inverter circuit is just to use a transistor, in this case uh, an FET, uh, N-channel FET. We connect the input to the gate. The gate will be pulled up via a 10k ohm resistor. The output comes from the drain and the drain is pulled up via a 1 mega ohm resistor and simply the source is grounded. This means that if there's no connection on the micro switch, this will be pulled high, current will flow and this will go to zero ohms and this point here will be low. So this is high and this is low, so it's an inverter. Conversely, if we ground the input here, this cannot pass any current, in which case this will be high. It sounds like a plan. Let's do it. Here we can see the small circuit board that I made up with the FET on it. It's a bit of overkill, but uh, it was whatever I had lying around. I've taken five volts from the A axis drive which I, I don't use, I don't have, and the green wire is the in input and output if you will. So the input from the micro switch comes in here on the gate of the transistor and then the drain goes to the input of the uh, axis, the z-axis. Uh, ground I've picked up from this connector here and that's all there is to it. With the inverter circuit now in place, as before, we have our micro switch, which is normally closed. We have our touch probe, not forgetting the grounding clip onto the, onto the tool there. We have our software. Let's switch the unit on. Now, if we activate the limit switch, we can see that the Z is indicated there. Similarly, with the touchpad. So all is good. If we now move the z-axis and activate the switch, we can see that it stops it immediately. Also in the reverse direction. Now let's 
double check that our tool sensor is still working. So we go over to measure offset Z. And I have another video on how that was set up if you're interested. So all is working. Now this is a special instance for the z-axis because of the tool probe. We don't have the same issue with the x or y axis, so we can use the software inversion uh, that's in the, in the settings on the program. Let's now take a look at fitting our micro switches and, uh, and move along. I've taken a few basic measurements from the CNC machine and this plate is for the z-axis, this one is for the x-axis, and those you just print two off and it just forms a sandwich. The third axis is a little different and you'll see how that fits in the next part of the video. Here we can see the Z axis installation. The cable that I'm using is uh, from an old laptop power supply so it's nice and, and flexible and I've just uh, tacked it in place there with hot melt glue. The switch plate itself is uh, just stuck on with double sided tape. Looking now at the x-axis installation, uh, obviously a similar arrangement. On the top of the unit I've just put a small piece of uh, terminal block to take the, the wires. And here I'm just about to thread the connecting cable through the chain to make the uh, final connections. Once I've done that I'll show you the y-axis arrangement underneath. The arrangement of the Y-axis switches is uh, very similar. Just note that the 3D printed part fits into the recess in the bottom of the rails there. Now it's time to test our handiwork. First off, we'll check out the limit switches. Starting with the Z. And down. It's a good job that it did stop it. Now let's check out our X. And finally the Y axis. So clearly the limit switches are working for us well. Let's consider the home position. The first thing to consider is, well, there's no place like home, but where is home? Is it the bottom left-hand corner? Is it the top right-hand corner? Is it somewhere in the middle? Well, it's all down to your personal preference and choice. When I'm cutting my latest record, this is where I would like my home position to be. How can we tell the machine that? First thing we need to do is to tell the machine that it is at the zero point. So we say set position to zero. And then we can see all of the axes are now at zero. I'm just going to jog the Z up out of the way. First we jog the X axis across. As the switch gets nearer, we use the single step until we see the micro switch is triggered. And we see it triggered there at minus 50.22. And do the same with the Y axis. And that is triggered at minus 80.84. Now what do we do with these magic numbers? We go back to our file settings on axis 3 and here we put the values in the set position so for the x that was minus 50.22 for the y that was minus 80.84 the z i'm just going to leave at 10. We'll okay that let's see what happens now when we click the home
and we can see that it has uh, reached our, our home position. That's limits and homing for you.